hey come on through for today's vlog what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be heading over to a construction site where we're building four luxury houses this is a project that's been running for about a year now and we're near completion and i'll talk you through the numbers how we found the property all the issues and challenges that we've had because believe me we had quite a few of those with this particular project and i'll share with you generally about developments how to find the sites how to analyze the numbers and how to make it work because one of the challenges with getting into developments and building houses particularly out the ground when you do new developments is to try and get the numbers and the costings right so i'll share some of those with you as well so let's get a few things together and let's head on over way to our site at the moment we're in the midlands uh, my preference is to be really just in the midlands you really get to know an area and i think it's really important uh, as a, a developer or even uh, an investor uh, or someone's looking to raise money for investments that you really know an area very well and midlands is quite a big area so it means there's plenty of things for us to do within the uh, the region particularly around the west midlands so we're heading over to our site now and the thing i get asked quite a lot is how do you get started in developments uh, when we talk about developments we talk about building out of the ground brand new buildings that don't exist how do we get started in that because that always seems so appealing and things people gravitate to and something i've been interested in for quite a long time but there's a few things that have put me off and uh uh, meant that I haven't rushed into it and things that you may be thinking about as well So for example, how do you de-risk it? How do you raise the money for those type of investments? Um, you don't know what you don't know so uh, these these are the things that uh, put me off for quite a while and ultimately what I got comfortable with is um, having somebody working with me who's experienced in doing those kind of projects so it de-risks it but also I had something that had a nice fat profit margin in it which meant that if things were uh, going to go off track a little bit that we still end up with a healthy profit so let's just talk about finding sites and how to crunch the the yeah, numbers particularly the uh, the numbers towards the north. so uh, apologies about the uh, about the sat nav so when we're looking at a site how do we work out what it's going to be worth so let's look at some simple numbers what we need to start with is what the end value of that particular site is going to be or what we call the gdv uh, the end value is the starting point for us so we're ultimately working backwards let's assume we're looking at a, a plot that has say uh, a capacity to have five houses on there so uh, let's say they're two hundred thousand pounds each five of those a million pounds gdv so we're looking at a site with a million pound gdv to build say five houses there could be five you know fairly uh, modest sized um, uh, houses there now if that's our end value developers generally want to work towards a profit margin based on the end value of of around 25 percent so in this particular case it's 250,000 pounds which is what um, we're looking at as a profit margin so that takes the figure down from a million to 750 uh, then we've got to work out what's going to be the cost of building out so let's again use some simple numbers let's say the build cost is about a hundred pound a square foot uh, the houses are say a thousand square feet each so each house is costing a um, uh, hundred thousand to build so the five houses cost five hundred thousand to build so then we take our 750 figure down 
by 500 so now we're down to 250,000 of course we've got finance costs we need to build into that as well so we need to minus finance costs we need to minus some contingency and then what's left is the value of the land as it stands so that's how we'd work out what we can pay for a site now that isn't necessarily a direct coloration to, uh, uh, to what someone's asking for a site sometimes people ask for silly figures particularly if the market's quite buoyant like it has been recently the figures can be unrealistic in the hope that somebody who doesn't really understand what they're buying ends up paying that kind of figure for it but to stay safe that's the way you do it you start with the GDV you minus off your 25% profit you minus the bill costs uh, and then you minus your finance costs another bit of contingency of that and that's what you ultimately in left with month, in terms of what you can pay for the fight this is assuming you've got planning permission on it and you're good to build Hey, welcome to our site here where we're building four luxury houses three five bedroom ones and one four bedroom on this beautiful site uh, it's a nice uh, idyllic country type setting although we're still literally in a uh, in a town but it's just backing on some some beautiful fields here you can hear the birds potentially singing maybe as well um, and it looks like the uh, the clouds might open up very soon and it might start raining so let's go on in I haven't actually been here for a, a few months would you believe and sometimes when I say things like that people are a little bit shocked and say hang on a minute you're building these houses and you haven't been here absolutely because it's about having the right team to work with and I have a great business partner on this project who's very knowledgeable and very experienced which I'll talk more about in a short while so he's here more regularly he keeps he's uh, essentially the eyes and ears for us in terms of this particular project and also we have uh, what's called an employer's agent who works for us as well to make sure uh, the costings of the site and things that are on track and again I'll talk more about that in a short while but maybe let's go inside let's look through some of the some of the houses as I said I haven't been here for a little while so it'd be great to see how far we've got we really should be finishing off I think in a few weeks time uh, one of the plots the, the one at the end over there uh, is uh, sole subject to contracts that's just going through the conveyancing so we need to get that one finished first because we've got a buyer ready uh, for that one so come on let's go inside come on through So right now we're in the uh, the original house that was on this plot it was a three bedroom detached house when we acquired this site this was what was here so it's a huge plot of land with just the one little house on here so the purpose with this is or the, the intention the plan with this is to extend it make it a bigger house so it's going to become a four bedroom detached luxury uh, luxury house so we've essentially gutted it out uh, this one's probably way behind in terms of the others our priority is to get the others done first particularly the one that's already sold which we'll go on to in a moment and that one we're focusing on finishing first this is the one that will probably finish last out of the four uh, the four houses so they'll create uh, we've already built the extension on the size so we'll create four bedrooms uh, up here uh, i mean looking around i think this would be lovely as one master bedroom but maybe that's not probably going to get us the price that we're looking for so this particular site we acquired for 510,000 effectively what we did is paid 510 for this uh, for this house but it was up for significantly more there were a number of uh, issues uh, there was some section 106 that needed to be paying as well because there was already planning approval which is a taxation that we need to deal with so we negotiated that bought that right down negotiated the price right down to make it viable because as I was saying earlier on, ultimately for me, it's about how do I de-risk a project? And the way to de-risk the project was, one is to get it at the right price to start with. And secondly is to make sure uh, that there's somebody involved that has the experience as well. So Russell, my partner, who's not here today uh, on this particular uh, project, and he's got considerable experience in building in this particular way. So it was that expertise that I could bring in into the project which I didn't necessarily have because I haven't built from the ground up before although I've done lots and lots of renovations and refurbs over the years loft conversions extensions but not necessarily building so that's how I got into the uh, the development space in terms of building from the ground up now when we uh, looked at this project initially we couldn't really get the numbers to stack because the asking price was quite high there was the section 106 taxation that needed to be paid as well at the point of completion 
And when we were looking around the area, there were a number of properties similar to this. There were other new builds that had been sold recently. So we were quite comfortable in terms of what we'd be able to achieve as an end price. But ultimately, it was trying to acquire it for the right price, which took a few months. So it was a few months of negotiation. But ultimately, when we got it to the figures that we needed to, it was a deal. And we should always be prepared to walk away if the numbers don't quite work for us. So right now we're in plot three. This is the one at right at the end uh, of the development uh, and the workers are in here right now uh, getting it finished because this is the one we've sold subject to contract. So apologies for the background noise and the banging going on, the tile cutting, etc. So this one's been modified slightly, hence the tiles being taken back up uh, again because now we're able to customize it for the, uh, the buyer before it's finished. And that's the advantages of them committing to it before the property is finished, that they can create little bits of customization. We've got a wonderful view on this particular uh, property. It's pity it's raining right now, but with all these bifolding doors open right up, beautiful fields behind. So this has got an amazing view on this one. This is why this plot in particular has been um, the most sought after and the sheep uh, I think are hiding away under the uh, under the hedges right now so the, the kitchens have arrived they're going to start assembling uh, them start putting them to uh, putting them together uh, later today and tomorrow so over the next few days the kitchen will be finished so but probably a few more weeks before this particular house is finished Okay, so we just uh, left site, heading back now. Weather's changed a little bit, it's starting to, starting to rain. So I just wanna talk through some of the numbers uh, on that particular uh, project and also some of the challenges which we faced as well, which I said I'd share earlier on. So the, the site uh, originally, as I mentioned, was a three bedroom uh, house on a huge plot of land and it already had planning permission on it to build three more houses and to part demolish and rebuild the existing one into a larger house which was a perfect project for what I was looking for uh, in the sense that it was, a, it was ready to go. It meant that we could put a building team on it and start, start with that particular project. Um, so when the project was brought to me uh, by, uh, by Russell, who I mentioned earlier, who I'm working with on this particular uh, project, um, he had the experience of being able to build out these type of sites before he'd worked on these type of projects before. The issue were the numbers didn't really stack. As I explained earlier on, how we look at the numbers, the numbers never really worked, and that was because it was overpriced, uh, and there was this issue about the taxation on it uh, as well. So it took a few months for us to negotiate that. And one of the things that I wanted to be comfortable about is that we can be able to sell these properties. It's easy enough to build, but actually, are we going to be able to sell them? Because you know, having seen them, they're not your traditional buy-to-let type properties. So if we weren't able to sell, uh, we don't really want to turn them into a, a buy-to-let because the numbers again are not going to work. So they're designed to sell. And having done some research in the areas, confident that we'll be able to sell these, lots of similar properties being sold. The numbers work. The cheapest ones there are about 500. So really the, the total uh, development value of that site is just over 2 million. It's about 2.1 million uh, for all of the four properties. So they're all over 500,000 uh, each. Um, so that was fine, uh, we agreed, uh, we've done a, a cash purchase uh, and I didn't have 500,000 sitting around so there's about 300 odd thousand that was from investors, a couple of hundred was our own funds that we used uh, to do initial cash purchase of the site so we could get it done and then um, I used a crowdfunding platform uh, run by a friend of mine, uh, Crowd, Crowd Property, and they funded a million pounds for the uh, project. That included the purchase. So, uh, uh, or, or what I mean by that is that included money towards the purchase. So, in total, um, we had a million pounds from there. There was 500 of ours that we'd already put in. I paid some of the investor money back um, from the first drawdown we had because the million pound raised they don't pass it all to you one go. They drip feed it out as you develop the project and as the value of the project starts to increase, they pay out more of that money. But we had a contract at the beginning that we were using 
uh, that had came to us as a, as a referral. His prices were, well, to be fair, he was much cheaper than everybody else. Uh, that was the good news. The not so good news were is after we dug out the foundations of why we we're still trying to discharge conditions that were part of the planning approval, uh, they went bust. So we had a hole in the ground uh, and no builder and no houses. Fortunately, we hadn't spent a huge amount of money with them. We'd spent about 25,000 with them at that point. Um, and so we were able to find another contractor, our current contractor, who'd come on to pick up the development. As I said, fortunately, there wasn't a huge amount done. So these were just some of the learnings along the way uh, in terms of, um, you know, just because you've got some way to build it, it doesn't mean that it's all going to go go smoothly. Uh, the builder had overstretched themselves. They couldn't perform uh, on the project. They'd also underestimated how long it was going to take to get conditions discharged from uh, planning, which took months as well. And that delayed us in terms of starting the, the project. And I think it was a straw that broke the camel's back for that particular builder. So this builder has been great. They, they took it on, they've, they've kind of got on with it straight away. Uh, the good team uh, that are doing this particular project. But you know, also we've had a few unforeseen, we've had some additional expenses as well, which isn't great. But it all comes back down to what I said earlier on, there needs to be enough profit in the deal so you can absorb little bumps like that along the way. Um, so um, our contract value is about 800 odd thousand pounds with the builder. So we're paying the builder around 800,000 pounds to build the, uh, the four houses, three new ones apart, demolish and, and uh, extend the existing one. That's already there. Um, and we've got finance costs uh, as well, plus the uh, purchase. So we're all in for about 1.3 million. There's a bit of contingency and other costs and things as well. So we'll end up around 1.5 million in terms of total costs. And as I mentioned, we'll sell for over 2 million. So there'll be a nice profit in it, you know, around 500,000 uh, for Russell and I on this uh, particular, particular project. So uh, it was only by making sure that uh, we buy at the right price, we de-risk it by having people involved who understand what they're doing. Um, and as well as Russell and I, earlier I also mentioned an employer's agent. What the employer's agent does is like a quantity surveyor that comes and checks the work in terms of what's being done, values it up to make sure what we're paying the builder each month for the work that they're doing is a fair assessment of what they're charging us. So. Um, a few learnings there. Let me know if you're finding this stuff useful or, or if I'm going in way too much detail. The purpose of these vlogs are really just to share my knowledge and experience with you, what I'm up to, the type of projects I'm doing, where I see the opportunities and where I see the market going. But I need some feedback from you in terms of what you think, if you're finding these useful, what you'd like to see in future vlogs. Um, and what would really help me, uh, if you like the videos, if you subscribe to the channel, if you hit the notification bell, so that you're notified when I'm releasing these videos, all that helps with the YouTube algorithm and it just means I'm feeling your love, so I can carry on doing more of these videos uh, for you. And of course, if you don't like them, let me know, I can take the feedback. Um, and maybe if there's um, not enough uh, interest in them, uh, you know, we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up, we'll stop doing these vlogs. But I'm hoping you're enjoying them, you're, you're liking them, so I can carry on doing more of these. Also, let me know what you would maybe do different on any of the projects I'm doing. I'm sharing my knowledge and experience, and uh, you know, you may have some experience in the things I'm talking about as well. Let me know your thoughts. What would you do differently on these projects? So thank you so much for taking the time and watching the vlog. And I look forward to seeing you again next week on vlog four. So we're back at the office now after the afternoon of filming on site. Uh, and we've got something very exciting Idas and I have been working on, which we want to share with you. But actually we'll have to wait till the next vlog as we're going to be dedicating all of the next vlog to discuss what we're launching. And I'm super excited to share that with you, but we can't share it just yet. So you'll have to wait till the next vlog. <laughs> something we've been working on for a while. So it's absolutely something we're buzzing about. Look forward to seeing you on the next vlog. See you soon.